I want to try to give you some intuition now to help you see um, the way in which slope is just correlation standardized. So forget about um, um, the statistical aspects for a moment. Let's just talk about lines, right? So suppose um, that you have a line right here. Um, maybe you have, I don't know, some x variable that's equal to either 1 or 2 and some y variable that's equal to 10 or it's equal to 20. And we have this line, okay? What's the slope of the line? Well, the slope of this line is going to be the change in y's divided by the change in x's. It's going to be 10, right? Okay. Now, suppose that I multiply the y variable. Label it as the y variable by 10. Okay, let me draw this again then. All right, so we've still got one, we've got two, it's the x variable, here's the y variable, but I multiplied by 10. So now it's 100, and now it's 200. There's this, there's this. What happens to the slope? Well, now instead of 10 being the difference between the two y values, I've got 200 minus 100. Instead of 20 minus 10, I have 200 minus 100. In other words, the slope has been multiplied by 10. So if you multiply y by 10, then slope is multiplied by 10. Okay. Okay. What if I do something else? What if I multiply x by 2? Let me draw that picture. So these values are now going to be 2 and 4. Here's my 100. Here's my 200. What's going to happen? Well, the slope, let's see, is equal to the change in the numerator divided by the change in the denominator, which is now not um, 2 minus 1 anymore. It's 4 minus 2. In other words, it's been multiplied by 2. Okay. So I get 50. If I multiply x by 2, then the slope is multiplied by one half. Okay, so this is how multiplying or, or increasing or decreasing the x or y variable by some factor changes the slope. So now let's think about this from the statistical standpoint. And suppose that I have some data. Here it is, it's x and y. Um, and here's how the variables are related to each other. Okay, and suppose um, let's suppose that it just so happens that the standard deviation of x happens to be one in this case, and the standard deviation of y happens to be one in this case, which implies that the slope is exactly equal to the correlation here, right? Because then the the s y over s x is exactly one. Okay, now suppose. that all the x values are multiplied by 10. Did I say that correctly? I want to say if we multiply all the y values by 10, if I said x, I apologize, all the y values by 10, okay? So I didn't put a scale on this picture, but I certainly could, right? So here's 10, and here's 20. Here's my new picture. I'll put some values on this too. So x can be 1 or 2, but now y can be 100 or 200. My data points, the relationship between x and y look exactly the same as it did before. I just increased um, the value of all those y's. Why would I do something like that? Why would one of the variables suddenly be multiplied by some constant? Well, for example, um, suppose that I'm measuring um, a length, a distance, and I'm measuring it in um, uh, millimeters, right? But now I'm going to measure it in meters, right? So that means I've just multiplied, or in that case, divided by a constant. Let me see it the other way. Um, so maybe it helps with the increasing as well. Suppose that I measure my height or measure everybody's height in inches, but I want to actually record it in centimeters. So I multiply all those heights by a constant to get the heights in centimeters. So, so that's the reason you, you might change the, 
um, you might multiply all the values in the data set by some constant, not because you're changing the pattern in the data set or the relationship between variables, but because you're literally thinking about doing the measurement on a different scale. If you multiply all the y values by 10, well, you haven't changed the standard deviation of x, right? But what have you done to the standard deviation of y? Well, let's remember what a standard deviation is. It's the square root of the sample variance. So it's the square root of 1 over m minus 1 times the sum of the y values minus the mean of y quantity squared. If you multiply all the values by 10, then each y value will get bigger by 10, and each, and therefore the sample mean will get bigger by 10. So you've got this factor of 10, it gets squared, so you end up with a 10 squared over here, and if you take it out of the square root, you end up with a 10 over here. The point is that if you multiply all the y values by some constant, like 10, then your new standard deviation is 10 times as big as your old standard deviation. When you multiply a variable by a constant, the standard deviation of that variable is multiplied by the same constant. So now, what about the slope of the line? So here I might draw a line, right? Here I'm gonna draw a line. Well, when I multiplied all the y values by a constant, we realized in the previous slide that that implies that the slope should also be multiplied by that constant, right? So here it implies that beta one should now not only be equal to r, it should be equal to r times sy, which is 10 times as big as it was previously. And I can do the same parallel thing with the x's. If we multiply all the x values by two, so I've got two and I've got four, and I've still got the 100 and the 200. By a similar logic, if I double all of the x values, and I've also doubled the standard deviation, and here we also have the standard deviation of um, y is 10 times as big as it was before. So now the slope is gonna be equal to r times sy, divided by sx, because we figured out in the previous slide that when you multiply the x values by some constant, the slope of the line should be divided by that constant. But all these three pictures look identical if you take off the axis labels, right? All these three pictures show the identical relationship between x and y. So if they have standard deviation one, the slope is just the correlation. But if, the, if you think of the axes as being stretched by some factor or squished by some factor, the relationship between the variables hasn't changed. You're just squishing the graphic. You can, in R, you can really do this, right? You can take the corner of the graphic and drag it around to make it look more or less squished. If you take the graphic and squish it, it doesn't change the fundamental relationship between the X and the Y, but it does change um, what the slope of the line has to be, right? If you multiply all the values by some constant. So this is where this idea comes from. The slope estimate is just the correlation, but standardized to have the right units. In other words, if you stretch out the y-axis, you better stretch out the, the slope of the line. If you stretch out the x-axis, you better shrink uh, the slope of the line appropriately. That's all that we're seeing here. Um, let me say it one more way before I stop. So the way I wanna say it is this. Suppose you have any data set, you have x and y. If you create a new variable, so for each person, you're gonna create this variable x prime, and if that variable is equal to the original x value minus the sample mean of the x's divided by the sample standard deviation of the x's. And if for each data point, you create a new variable called y prime, which is equal to the original y values minus the mean of the y's divided by the standard deviation of the y's, okay, then, the slope of a regression line connecting the standardized version of x and the standardized version of y will be equal to the sample correlation r.
And again, that's all based on this relationship. I'm writing it a lot of times because I want you to start to internalize it. And what we've done by calculating x prime and y prime is created versions of the original variables that have standard deviation one. Um, and so therefore, this term is crossed out. If you standardize both your variables, then the slope estimate is just the correlation.